Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and today we are in Hamilton, Virginia. We are about an hour um, outside of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., uh, but maybe during rush hour, what, six, seven hours, something like that. Stand next that. to me is Jennifer and Kevin. They are the new owners of this beautiful custom coupe we have behind us. Uh, so the first thing, Jennifer, Kevin, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, Matt. I actually want to thank you just for a minute because... I'm in the service industry and being in the service industry these days, it is so hard to find people committed and standing behind their product. And you have been that the first time I talked to you on the phone, I heard it second time and every time thereafter, it's been wonderful. Well, thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. That means the world to us because you probably have gotten a good taste. We've been here. Gosh, seven days. This coupe took way longer, but like I told these guys and I tell everyone that calls us, when we're here, we're here. Um, I've learned 11 years of doing this now. It's not worth it to be in a rush. I stress myself out enough, but you will have this for a lifetime, and that means so much to hear that. Let's go ahead and get started. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, so let's step back a little bit. What we have is what we call our Craftsman Coupe, and we definitely have done a lot of customizations, but what you'll see when it comes to the Craftsman Coupe is we have a split roof elevation. This run is eight by 18 and is our six foot walls and it's about almost eight foot at the peak. Our hen house back here is eight by eight and this style we can walk into what we call our shed um, hen house combo, okay? Um, so eight by eight hen house, eight by 18 run. And let's start by walking around the outside first, okay? So let's come over here. And again, stop me anytime you guys have questions. Now right here is your Dutch door. These have become very, very popular. Number one is, it's kind of cool to say you have a Dutch door uh, on your chip coop. But the function is this. It actually, there was always an original function. Um, one of them was when you want to throw in your table scraps, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, and you don't want your girls to get out if you don't let them free range. Take your table scraps, you know, this time of day after dinner, throw them in there, okay? And the chickens will eat it up. One of the rules is think about it like eating, uh, feeding fish. You don't want to overfeed them. You want to only give them enough scraps to consume within 24 hours. If they can't consume it, you are asking for pests, flies, rats, mice, things like that. Okay? So you store your table scraps in there. The other thing, and I kind of noticed this, you guys have the Scottish Terrier yeah. and two Westies. Westies. Okay. Um, Someone on the phone, it might have even been you, I don't know, I've talked to so many people, they mentioned, you know, one of the reasons why I like the Dutch door is if you want to use this for the chickens to come in and out, but you don't want your dogs to get in there, eating the chicken feed, eating the chicken droppings, whatever. Or the chickens. Um, <laughs> or the chickens. Um, you don't want them to hop over this, or they, most dogs won't hop over. I know there's definitely some that will, but it's just a way to keep the dogs out. So I thought that was a pretty cool, Very another, cool. another function for the Dutch door. Um, so you got a barrel bolt right here, and that is drilled all the way through, okay? We do that because we've learned the hard way. We weren't drilling it all the way. That gets clogged. Next thing you know, you're trying to jam it down in there. So we actually drill it all the way through so nothing ever gets caught in there. Uh, we also match the board and batten here that's on your hen house. Um, I do recommend adding a carabiner or a padlock uh, right here. Do we have a carabiner nearby? Usually I try to pull one out. Ingrid, if you're editing right now, bring the carabiner up so people know what it is. Um, you can add a carabiner here and a carabiner here. Again, padlock, uh, combination, whatever you want to use. Just don't give the key to the raccoons. Uh, but raccoons, they have thumbs and pinkies. They're the ones that are really, really good at using their hands, getting into things. So um, you add that extra protection. So now, and actually when you go to open up your door, and um, if the door shuts behind you, you have the stainless steel, what we call the lockout cable. So you just pull on that, and that opens up the gate latch, okay? All right, let's walk around here. Well, actually, right here's a good shot, too. Notice your predator apron. All you YouTube chicken police out there, in case I forget, here it is. Here's your predator apron. Nothing's going to dig underneath here. Now, here's how this works. This is a 16-gauge PVC-coated <laughs> fencing material, 2-inch by 3-inch uh, by 2-inch squares. It's all shot into your base. Oh, by the way, excellent base. So happy you guys did that. makes our job so much easier. It's all shot in with stainless steel staples comes out two foot, and this, believe it or not, will disappear over time, all right? But I know you guys talked about bringing in some soil, uh, maybe seeding it and whatnot, and 
that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do that. All this too is pressure treated, so this is designed for ground contact. Just don't go past halfway, all right? So you can make this disappear and grate off that way. But anyways, how it works is if an animal tries to dig underneath, they're, they always come to the base of the run and they'll try to dig right here. They don't come out here 24 inches and then dig underneath. All right, so now we got some cool new features. I can't wait to show these off. Uh, right here, I know you guys have seen the duck house, but what's nice about this Craftsman Coop is we have the hen house, shed, duck house combo. And right here is a duck house. Now, when you, ventilation, you can never have enough ventilation, but we also want to make it as easy as possible to open and close them. Uh, with our windows, all you do is lift up, pop out, you're done. This is polycarbonate, 400 times stronger than glass. Just store this inside your hen house. Down here in Virginia, maybe two months out of the entire year, you may need these. Remember, chickens and ducks, they actually do quite well in cold temperatures. It's the wind chill. That's what we're always trying to stop. And what would you say is the temperature that is on the verge of too cold? For chickens? Yeah, or ducks. Well, see, I'm not a duck expert like I am with, well, I don't want to call myself a chicken expert with chickens. I mean, being from upstate New York, it's gotten down to negative 10, 14, negative 20. We don't use a heat source. You don't want to use a heat okay. source. It's the wind chill. That's what kills pretty much any living creature. Um, it's, but also speaking of when it comes to, you know, a lot of people make the mistake of adding a heat source to the hen house. What happens is if you were to add a heat source to the hen house and you think it's too cold, but they still need to come out into the run, that change in temperature, that rapid change is what stresses them out. You want consistency. So as long as the temperature inside the hen house and the temperature outside are consistent, it doesn't really matter what temperature it is. But like a lot of our northern customers, uh, especially up in the Canada, they have us add what are called polycarbonate run covers. And you just screw them to the inside. And what that does is again, it blocks the wind. But the temperature is consistent. Yeah. Anyways, all right, so here's your duck house. Now the other nice thing is, I, actually, why don't you come on over? Why don't you demonstrate this for us? I love this part. So we got our metal roof, and we all about easy access. So go ahead and let it go. That's going to come right up. We have gas struts. These ones are 45-pound gas struts each. And when it comes to ducks, they want just like a dog house, if you will. Now we have a pressure-treated floor right down here at the bottom. And I saw that we have some straw. You brought some straw up, right? I put Maybe. it at the back. Okay, so what we'll do before we leave, we'll put some straw down there. The, the ducks will absolutely love that for bedding. Okay, and then they'll just learn to come in here and sleep at night. Also, a lot of times the ducks will lay their eggs. They're gonna make a little nest right down, usually in the corners. No, they'll pick a corner and they'll lay their eggs down there. What about maintenance? Um, it's actually not that bad. They will have, duck droppings are very wet and half the defecation uh, will be outside and the other half can be inside uh, the duck house. Well, at least that's more with chickens. I, I wanna say ducks actually do a better job of not making it as big of a mess inside the duck house. But what I would suggest is, this is not designed with a deep litter system like our hen house is, but when it starts to accumulate with droppings from the ducks, um, you can add some straw or any other type of carbon on top of it. Um, and then if it starts to get that you know heavy ammonia smell, just come in, clean it out, and then put fresh bedding down. Everything inside here, again, it's pressure treated on the bottom. It's all sealed on the inside. So as far as maintenance of the actual structure, you should have zero, okay? Mm -hmm. Just keep up on the bedding as needed, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Nope, perfect. All right? Mm -hmm. Then you can go ahead and shut that. One of the nice things I love about this is this just, just going to shut, so it stay nice and secure for you. Now, here we go. Brand new item, all right? <laughs> you ready? Here we go. First time for this. Let me clean that off. All right, so what we have here is what's called a duck dipper. Now, one of the things I've learned with ducks is I always thought they had to have some kind of body of water to swim in. That's not true. I know they have to get their face wet, yeah. right? Both. Right. Yep. So what happens is if you had a, you know, say a kiddie pool inside here, they're going to make a mess. You're going to be spending a lot of time going in there, pulling it out, trying to dump the water outside so it's not making a mess inside your run, paying the button to do all that. So what happens is um, they're going to stick their heads in here, get their heads wet, and then they should be good to go. They could also drink water, but they also can use the water bar, which we'll talk more about that when we get on the inside. Um, and the nice thing about this, I talked them into letting us do it. Her uh, boys around here, look at the boys following here. Let's get a shot of these boys. 
such good kids. They actually came out all as a family, trenching, digging. Yeah, say hi. I've just put them on the spot. Yep, they all came out here. Um, so they trenched for us a drain line, all right? And um, so down inside here, my, here is the concept. So down inside here, we have a strainer, and you can pull that out after you're done draining it. Right over there is a 500-watt paddle heater. So you're going to plug that in. That's self-regulating. That's going to make it nice and easy. Uh, so if it ever does start to freeze, you don't have to worry about it. That's another set and forget it system. Anyways, we come over here. All right, Nanner, I'm going to have you. Here's our beautiful camera lady. Say hi. She's uh, getting up there nice and slow. Nice and sweaty. Nice and sweaty, yes. So what I did want you guys to have to do is um, have to bend down there and dump it out each time you go to clean it. Again, because it is going to get messy. So what we did is, again, we put that strainer in the bottom and treated it kind of like a kitchen sink or a, I guess, a shower stall, if you will. And then when it is time to clean it, we have, we're just gonna pull this cover here. We have a ball valve right here, and you're gonna open up that ball valve. And what's gonna happen is all that water is gonna drain right out down to the bottom. And then, after, then you can bring your hose around, hose it out, get it all clean, let all that dirt, debris, whatever, go right out down your line, right down your lawn. And then when you're done cleaning it out, just close that ball valve, put your cover back on. Look at Sean did such a good job. He went all around all this, cutting it nice and nice for your apron. And then you're, all you're gonna do is fill it back up. That's all right. Okay. This is our heated water system. This is extremely, extremely popular. I love this because again, we wanna make, I'm the laziest chicken owner you've ever met. Um, water can be one of the biggest chores when it comes to chickens. And what's nice about this system is it's very large. We also have a set up with your gutter that'll feed the water barrel. If it doesn't rain for like a month, you can always bring your hose. That's what I just did right now, is I filled it up with your hose. Um, this is uh, probably right about here. So you got about 50 gallons of water. And how this works is right now, when it's not freezing, you don't have to have anything plugged in. So it's gonna be a normal water system, if you will, where you got pressure pushing water down through this hose bib. Right now I have the hose bib open, and that's going through that stainless steel hose feeding your water bar. And then it's gonna go through your water bar, and it'll level off right about here, kinda of like a poor man's level if you've ever seen one of those. So when it comes time where it is gonna freeze, you got two things that keep all this water from freezing. One is you have a heater all the way down inside here. This is a thousand watt heater. It's designed to keep water up to 50 gallons from freezing all the way to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This is self-regulating. You plug it in, set it, forget it. You don't have to do anything else. This is designed for plastic, which is your barrel. Your barrel is a food safe plastic. So we're gonna drop that all the way down to the bottom. It's actually high density polyethylene. Oh, the barrels are? Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Anyways, uh, you got a screen right here. Very important, this keeps all the leaves out yeah, and debris and things like that good. from getting down inside the rain barrel. If your water does start to get a foul smell, again, this is rainwater. This isn't designed for you to drink, um, but you may need to always check it from time, you know, like once a week, at least check and make sure you didn't have a hole in a leak all of a sudden. But um, if you start to get a foul smell for whatever reason, every situation is different, all you gotta do is drain it, clean it out, fill it back up, okay? Um, so anyways, all right, so this is uh, self-regulating, plug it in, set it, forget it. So here we have our 110. Um, we're gonna plug this in. I want you to see what happens. Now, before I get to there, now this is critical. This gets a little confusing, and we're here forever. We're friends for life now, if you haven't figured that out. Uh, you can always call us if you have questions. This is your thermostatic switch for your pump. So, again, your heater has its own. Your pump does not. You have a pump right there hooked up to your water bar. All right, and again, we'll go over this when we get on the inside. You're gonna plug the pump into here, and then you have outlets inside. You plug that into there. Again, that's also set and forget it. But what I'm gonna do is it's about 110 degrees right now, so that's not gonna work. We're gonna plug it directly on. The pump circulates the water through the Yep. So now it's pushing the air out. I also have your water bar tilted up just a little bit on this side. I don't want what's called an air dam or air trap. So that's the return. That's the, the return. That's what it should look like. Okay. The water is going into the water bar from there. Follow the hose through the water bar. And when you have the pump on, it comes up this side. 
and returns. And returns into the barrel. You plug it into here. That you plug this into 110. Cold. As long as your power is on, you don't have to do anything. This will come on at, it should be 35 degrees Fahrenheit, goes off at 42 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't do anything. And these are nice. These are very, very reliable. We've never had one fail yet. Uh, so so you, we plug that in now. You can plug it in now, absolutely. And, and it'll, it'll just do its thing. It'll do its thing. Okay. That's the nice okay. part. Now here's what's happening. But the pump always is on. Okay. No, okay. no. This is gonna control the pump. The pump is only going to come on when it's close to freezing and when it is freezing. Oh, and that's the only time it's needed. That's the only oh, time okay. it's needed. Gotcha. All right, so this we call the back of the hen house, even though it's really on the side, I guess you could say, but this is the back side. Um, this is all just like all our coops, Carolina, custom coops. You have, again, tons of ventilation. Lift off screen, or lift off hen house doors. You just open these up. Stainless steel hinges, lift off. Again, down here, maybe have those on two, three months out of the year. All right, you want a ton of ventilation. You want as much ventilation, that's what's nice about this coop. Now, you don't have to have carabiners here. This is all backed up by the half inch hardware cloth. So that's completely safe. Here, I would add a carabiner, okay? Now, you open up your doors. So no fox will get in? That is correct. Even, so even if it's uh, the doors are not on, or at night, you're not gonna have predators. That is correct. Okay. Ingrid, bring up the picture. We had a customer send us pictures of her, she had foxes trying to get in. She was our first, one of our first hen house screen doors. So I was like, well, that's gonna be a good test. They never got in. All right, yep. cool. All right, so. so. The carabiners are for the doors that will open without a screen on them. Yes, ma'am. Yep, okay. that's it. Okay. Yep, you got it. So there's a barrel bolt up here, you open this up. And here's your deep litter door. Now here's where the fun begins, if we're not having fun already. All right, so you're gonna drop down your deep litter door. Here's your food safe, high density polyethylene. I forgot to clean it out, apologize about that. Um, in here, you have a four by eight hen house, okay? Here is your ladder that is designed, especially for you people that want silkies. They're special, they gotta have a little extra help getting out. Let's get a nice shot of that. <laughs> Um, there's what we call our chicken ladder. Here's your roost bars. They actually not while well, you're right there. What is this string for? Okay, you ready for this? We got a couple shots of this. So you're gonna pull, go down, and let it drop right to there. We're gonna let that not, not stop it. That should have closed perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then pull, come down, bring that knot through, go back up, boom, done. So that's to let them in and out, right? You're that's whenever you want to open and close this. Now again, this opening is completely secured by your rung. You don't have to have a door here, but like we were talking about last night, if you are worried about you know the nor'easter wind coming in, or you want extra security, whatever, whatever you want it for. Here's the other thing too, if you're thinking about guillotine doors, um, now, if this was on your run, it is absolutely critical that doors always drop below here. We call it the raccoon zone, the raccoon guard. Uh, it has to drop down at least a half inch to three quarter so that they can't get their claws down underneath there and reach up. What happens in the run area is litter starts to build up and doesn't close all the way. But in this situation, you don't have to worry about it. Yep. Um, Here here's go. another nice thing. Yep, nice thing. Is we have what we call sockets that hold your roost bars. If you have to clean them, you pop them out just like that. Come on out. All right. So we, how do you clean them? You can take a hose, you can take a scrub brush, you can do whatever you want. If you have to clean your roost bars, call me, something, there's something wrong. Now, you're going to get feet marks, you're going to get wear marks, that's perfectly fine. Um, I have never cleaned our roost bars, I know a lot of people that never clean their roost bars. But I have customers that want that option, they can't handle seeing one speck of dropping in here. So again, we are trying to build these coops one size fits all, that's why we designed these. So if you do go to clean them, just pop them out. Um, you can hose them down, let them dry out in the sun. The sun's one of the world's best sterilizers if you're worried about things like that. Also, I wish we, I wanted to do it here, but if you guys ever, I don't know if you've seen our new Manila covered roost bars with rope. I made a special machine. Ah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm just nods really in the nice. back. Um, it's really, really nice. And Ingrid, again, bring that up if you want right now. It's something we're gonna start selling as an extra. It's not necessary. 
But think about this, and this actually comes from a vet. Um, they recommended to one of our customers, she kept getting bumblefoot. And bumblefoot can happen when they get a cut in the bottom, and it's a staph infection, and that cut can't heal. When they are sitting on here, if they got a bad cut, uh, that cut's not allowed to breathe. So by wrapping it with rope, we use a quarter inch rope, it allows it to breathe. It actually mimics more of a natural tree branch. When they're sitting on these roost bars, their rear ends are gonna hang over here, they're gonna hang over here. They're not gonna be defecating on here. The one that might get dirty is the perch bar, which is right here. Again, this is for our special chickens, silkies and other things Smaller like that. Smaller chickens. Smaller chickens that need a little help getting up into the egg Visually box. impaired chickens. So we have some customers that will clean oh, that off because you will get some defecation maybe on here, but it's a chicken coop and they're worried about if they step through that and they step in there, it's contaminating right. their egg box. Don't worry about it. The beauty of nature, you know, a lot of people, they go in and scrub their eggs. Worst thing you can do, there's a part around the outside of their egg. While we were here, she got her first egg. Yes. I know. I wish we would have got that. Yeah, yeah, a round of applause. All right, there we go. Good girl. Um, so you can actually keep them at room temperature. Don't clean them. You shouldn't have to clean them. There's a bloom on the outside that protects it. All right. Let nature do its thing. But anyways, I forgot where I was going with all that. But you should never have to clean out your roost. Probably uh, clean your roost bars. But okay. If you have to, there you go. All right. Um, other than that, here's the other big thing I want to point out. Again, when it comes to coop, size matters. Look at, look at, a chicken when it's roosting is going to be what? Maybe at the most, they're, they're laying down on their bellies, maybe 10 inches. You know, look at all this headroom. Heat rises, your camera's up there, by the way. Put that up there for you. Um, what do we got? My God, 56 inches? Are you kidding me? So here's what happens is, you know, it is going to warm up in here, but we got to let the hen house breathe. The thing that a lot of people make the mistake of when they're building their own coops is they don't have enough ventilation. Um, cross ventilation and allow it to escape so it continues to heat up. Here, you've got ventilation coming in all four sides. You've got a functioning cupola and a ridge cap that functions where all that hot air hits the roof, goes out through the top, so it won't continue to heat up. But even when that hot air is at, up at the top, it's nowhere close to where their heads are. If you look at a lot of these other small coops, they're lucky they got two, three inches above their head to that roof. So Here what is 56. the chicken math? Talk to Ooh. me about that. What, what is my capacity here? Chicken math. Okay. So how many chickens do you have right now? Six. Okay. How many chickens do you think you'll end up with? Five. <laughs> <laughs> so chicken math is come next year, you're going to want more. Everyone does. Right. It. And there's a couple ways to go about it. But now as far as your hen house. So again, this is four by eight. You have two eight foot roost bars. You have 16 foot of roosting bar space. I like the one foot rule. I like a king size bet. So that's 16 chickens. Phantoms, double that. Was that 32? Because you can cut that number in half. Um, but you can go eight inches. Who's a, who's a mathematician around here? What's um, 96 times two? The point fingers, 96 times two. Ingrid, bring up the math. Okay, 96 times two. Okay. At, all right, so that's your total number of inches. Divide that by eight. That would be your max number of chickens, but I don't like to max it out. Um, leave yourself room for the girls and leave yourself room to grow your flock because yes, chicken math happens. You're going to find out more about more breeds that you may want. You're going to go into the Ag and Market store and see these cute little chicks next year. Um, one of your hens go broody, okay? Um, you guys are mothers. You know what it's like. She wants to be a mother. Give her some fake eggs. Let, them, let her sit on them. After 21 days, come out at night, remove those eggs, put the baby chicks underneath there, they'll take to her, she'll do her job for you. She becomes a brooder, she becomes the protector, she's the one that teaches and cleans the baby chicks, um, and then they're automatically introduced to the flock. So now you have room for them, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about that with the egg clutch and why we do what we do there. Um, and of course, you can give her fertile eggs. So the question we get a lot is, how many bales do we need? Can we go ahead and get your hump in here? Absolutely. Okay, please. so, and that's actually going to help us talk a little bit about the deep litter system. So, go ahead and put that in there, sir. Alright, so check this stuff out. This is straight in from France. This is the good stuff. Look how nice and clean this is. They are the ones that basically invented this process of cleaning the hemp. And it's nice and clean, nice and bright. Also, it's mostly, if not 100%, the inner part of the plant, which is the absorbent part of the plant. Um, and that's what you want. The outside part of the plant is repellent to moisture, and that's what they use for clothing. It just kind of makes sense. So the cheaper stuff out there, you're going to see it's darker. It's not as absorbent. It's way dustier. 
Yeah, make sure you see that. Look, I'm dumping this. Where's all the dust? Here's all we're gonna do. We're gonna toss this around, and we want to start out about four to six inches. So, I would say that's an average of two inches. Come on in, bud, bring that in. We're gonna add one more bale. So I guess the answer would be, if you've got a four by eight hen house, let's start off with two bales of industrial hemp. Now, chicken coop ratio. You know, how long, next question is, how long is this gonna last me? It all depends on how many chickens you put in here. If you overload it, do what factory farmers do. You load this up with 100 chickens, you're gonna have a mess. You're gonna have unhealthy, stressed out chickens. Don't overload the nitrogen the carbon ratio. That's what you're doing in here is you're composting. You're looking for that perfect ratio. So here's your carbon. Also, this is not like pine shavings. It's not acidic like pine shavings. It's very beneficial for the microbes. The chickens are gonna get out in the ground. They're gonna start scratching. They're gonna defecate in here. And they're gonna introduce the microbes and they're gonna do their job. This, for six chickens, you almost go all year. So okay. the question real quick is, throughout the course of this year, mm -hmm. is, are we adding little layers? Or okay. are, we are we just, just turning, it, turning over? it over? That's all gonna depend on how many chickens and the activity of the chickens in here. Right now, if you only had six chickens, I would suggest just turn it over if the chickens haven't already. And you can throw some scratch in there and let them do it. You are gonna add to it or end up cleaning it out based on smell, right. not visual. Okay. Remember, this is a chicken coop, this is a hen house. You're gonna see a lot of chicken droppings. What's great about hemp is it's almost, it's, it's amazing stuff. You're gonna see a lot of chicken droppings, you're not gonna smell anything. Um, but let's say you don't turn it over, let's say you start it off with a thinner layer, then you can just add to it. Uh, we do have a handful of customers, they fill it right up. They never have to add full? to it. How huh? many, what is full? 12 inches. Now here's what's gonna happen. Um, as you're adding your litter, um, it's gonna kinda go up and down, kinda like the tide, because your droppings are gonna be bigger, and then as it starts to break down, it's gonna go down, and you're gonna add more. Where we've learned this, where customers keep adding hemp, and they still haven't filled it up, and it doesn't smell. Um, so until you can't fill it up anymore, that's when it comes time to clean it, all right? Um, but what we do, or suggest, is when you start to smell the nitrogen smell, that's when you add your carbon, that's when you add your industrial hemp. Okay. This stuff just lasts so long. Where, just think about it, what's the nuisance? It's the smell. That's what's gonna attract pests, all right? So as long as you're not smelling it, it's doing its job. Awesome. Okay. All right, now, here's the other best part. When it comes time to clean, all you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your wheelbarrow up, you're gonna bring one of your boys out, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. No bending over, you're welcome, all right? <laughs> Remember, what I tell you, how do you find out who your best friend is? Give him a shovel. Give him a shovel. Thank you. I'm glad he's listening. All right. So you're going to drop down your deep litter door, just like a tailgate. No bending over. Pulling, sweeping motion. Put it right in the wheelbarrow. Go over to your compost or go over to your garden, depending on the time of year. Doesn't get any easier than that. And that door comes down. Just like I had it. Yep. Yep. Pull that. That comes down. There's your barrel bolt. One there. One there. Drop it down. Pulling, sweeping motion. Again, your apron will be gone by then. You won't be hitting it like I am right now. And like Nan was saying, take your, call the crust, take that top part off, put that separately in another container, pull the bottom or compost the stuff off, put that over in your other compost or garden, put the crust back in here, because now you're ahead of the game because it already has the microbes in it. You're not starting over. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Love that sound. Okay. So we're going to close this up. All right, I'm getting excited about this part. Now listen, I'm a sensitive guy, but you won't hurt my feelings if you don't like it. So real quick, you had a tree, Hurricane Sandy. 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 Hurricane Sandy tipped over, how old was the tree? 200 to 250 years old. 250 year old oak tree. Um, One of the reasons we bought this lot. Oh, okay. We love the tree. Nice, yeah. and it's gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, but they're making great use of it. You had a sawyer come in, you had a band mill, sawed it through and through. One of my huge passions, I miss sawing. Um, but anyways, <laughs> non does it. it almost put me in my grave anyways um hopefully we're gonna build you guys a beautiful dining room table but she had a nice piece yeah with, with uh natural edge or live edge mm -hmm. and you wanted really a trellis right more of a trellis shelf thing so you could set things on it come on around here 
Oh. Very nice, very nice. Look at that. That's lovely. Simple but nice. So you Thank got you. your you're welcome. You got your live edge. I matched. Here's your knot. Well, you had a big branch coming out there, so we matched that. Kept that figure from the um, where the car grants were. And again, you don't have to do anything to that. White Oak actually does a very good job, uh, weather resistant. And Ingrid, okay, go ahead, Ingrid, bring the picture up. Nan, go ahead and tell them what do we do. Uh, Matt actually went up on the ladder and laid across that shelf. I did my George Costanza. You know, he's in his underwear. <laughs> um, so I had huge flat bolts going through the framing into your gussets here. You can put anything you want up there. You can and then grow anything you want around it. And it's going to look beautiful. We've got soffit lighting all around. So you got one right there. It's going to cast some beautiful shadows. So you can put a statue there, whatever you want. And there's your first piece of your 250 year old oak tree that I think just looks spectacular. Thank you. But, uh, you're welcome. That awesome. part of the tree will never come down again. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good point. <laughs> okay, so back here behind the hen house, you got a window here, lots of ventilation. Take that out, we'll store that inside. Um, maybe two months out of the year, you'll have to have that on. Here's your egg hutch. Super easy, you're gonna come right here, gather your eggs. One of the nice things about our egg hutches is this drop down door on the back. A lot of the other ones, they lift up right here and you'll scare the crap out of the chickens. They hate that. Think about it, they wanna be very aware of aerial predators. Uh, now here's the other nice thing. Let's say you have one that goes broody and she's sitting over here and she's got her little baby chicks and they're not quite ready to hop out that way, but they still need food and water. Now you've got room, put a little dish here oh, and a little wow. dish there. Super easy, again, put this in storage, you're done. We have a lot of customers, they don't even use the dividers. They pull us out, that's what we do. You know, you don't have to have dividers. Again, one size fits all, gonna make everyone happy. Fill it up with hay, straw. Also, here's something, um, we've had some customers. I think we did Aspen mats down in Delray recently. Um, so this high density is really, really nice. It's a food safe high density, super easy to clean. If you ever do have to clean out your egg hutch, something else might be wrong. But again, a lot of people like the idea, all this will pop out, um, but it can get slippery. So what we've noticed is you take like coconut mats, just take a coconut mat. I'm not gonna do all the police right now, but you get the idea. You can put it in yeah, there, you like can notch it, it out right there. You know, maybe yeah. cut the corner so it lays better. And then put your hay in there. Just, you know, encourage your instincts. They want a nest. So give them something they can build a nest with. You know, make them work. Let them do their job. So you recommend hay in here, straw in the duck house? Hay or straw in the duck house. You can use straw in here. I find hay is a little bit better for them to work with. Also, you know, and I was a bug guy for a long time. Mites can live anywhere. People are like, oh, they're going to live in the hollow parts of the straw, the tube. Come on. But, or it'll get into their crop. I don't know. I know hundreds, thousands of people that use straw, use hay. Uh, that's what we use. Um, but the I, hay is okay in the duck house. Absolutely. I would say whatever's readily available for you. Or you could even use the industrial hemp in the duck house. But you'll be cleaning that more on a regular right. basis. Hemp's not cheap, but right. it does last a long time. So it may end up being cheaper in the long run when you add in how often you will have to replace it and your own time. You, know, you guys are busy professionals. Time is very valuable. Um, so I know the people that have ducks, they love the hay straw mixture and the industrial hemp inside the hen house and then use this long stringy stuff for the nesting material inside the egg hutch. All right, let's walk around here. This, now, now I gotta thank you guys, this is awesome. We. Um, Luckily scheduled ourselves to really try to do what we call, you know, the coop scaping and coop decorating. Um, it's just amazing what you can do. Just hanging some flowers. We, um, Jennifer and I spent about uh, four hours on the phone going through a uh, secondhand store, picking out a door, trying to get some trim work on. We scraped it off, custom painted it for her, the color she want, wanted, um, the reclaim knob there. And we added the T-hinges. And you got a deadbolt here also with that lockout cable. And then we'll open this up. Now she hasn't seen this yet. She picked three different types of floor, went back to the store three different times. Uh, she finally picked one and we just got done putting it in here. So come on in, check it out. What was it called again? I forget. This 
Yeah. Uh, Blue Ridge Pine. Blue Ridge Pine. Yeah, it reminds me of antique heart pine. Uh, it's not real. It is synthetic, but it's very, very durable, very stable. It's going to work out really well for inside her shed slash hen house combo. Um, and very, you know, if you think about it, fairly inexpensive for what you just got for the looks, the right. durability. Um, we went around, put the shoe molding around the outside. You have pressure treated base underneath, stone underneath that. Um, it's beautiful. This is the gem shed. Good. The, gem, the gem shed. So let's... Um, the gen house and the hen house. Oh, so I, I tell you what, oh, here's the other thing. Um, let me come in here. I love this. So we changed it up a little bit. I love this color combo. We got some, again, repurposed. I think these came off a china cabinet. Uh, doors is all original. All I did is made them fit inside here. Added a gate latch. We put this, uh, this is 14 gauge, might have been 16 gauge, half inch by one inch, um, zinc coated hardware cloth behind it, but we left it silver. I thought that silver brown and this beautiful, you know, we call it Carolina white, but it's more of a marshmallow color. Um, white just really looks nice. It pops, you match your picture frames. You know, we got Piggy and a chicken over there. We got Lammy over here. You know, it just looks so beautiful. The chair. The chandelier. Yeah, we got the chandelier in. You ready to fire that up? Oh, so you're gonna open up your windows. Now, one thing I did notice, Nan was right. That picture, I was gonna try to put it right here to hide the conduit. I forgot about your windows. It was gonna hit it. So, I still hung it there thinking. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I think it looks good. Yeah. And then you can still open up your window when you want. Right. Yeah, you got a window there. A little coffee table, a little chicken reading down there. Cool chickens. Anyways, so, we'll plug this in. All right, go ahead, give it a try. This is your dimmer switch. Okay. So go ahead and turn that on, and then go ahead and bring your dimmer up. Yay. And there's your chandelier. It's so pretty. One of the nice things that they are doing that I absolutely love is they ran a dedicated circuit. You guys actually did the digging and trenching. Again, they're all out here as a family, something you don't see every day, so kudos to you guys. Um, they're gonna continue it on around the backside, put an LB which is kind of like a hard 90 up into that junction box. Your electrician will tie that all together. Cool. Oh, and back here, um, here's your window. So you kind of, again, you want as much ventilation as possible. This was Jennifer's idea. Great idea. Uh, we were struggling a little bit trying to figure out what's the best way to make this work. Got our lift off hinges. Again, tons and tons of ventilation. Oh, that reminds me. What are you going to do when you got to store this stuff? If we come back in here, all right, um, you can put your hemp underneath there, whatever. You got these big, giant pull-out drawers. That is just super, super easy. They're rated for 500 pounds. Put your whatever you want on here. People put the hemp on there. People put, um, you know, those big aluminum trash cans if you want to put your feet in there. Whatever you want. Um, obviously, with your chair and whatnot over there, you have to move that to pull that one out. Yeah. But they just slide straight in out. They're not on a tracking system. They're just on casters, but they're straight. So let's go inside your run. Watch your head. You guys are a very tall family, so those are six foot walls. So this is kind of our signature. So here's the front of the duck house. It's kind of become our signature look. The curved arch to show that's a duck house versus our what's that? Like a three sided top hen house on the chicken coop. But anyways, here's where your ducks will go in and out. Real simple there. Come over here. Here's the other side of your duck dipper. Um, I can't wait uh, to get your ducks in here because I'm predicting that they should use it right away. They actually should love it. But again, here's the idea. They're going to stick their heads, go right in there and get their bills wet without getting in there and making a mess. Again, here's your 500 watt heater. All you're going to do is bring this right up, come right in here, plug this in. You're done. That has an internal thermostat. You don't do anything. But here's what happens. So here's your pump. Water's coming in right now. It has pressure because it's up here. Water's pushing that down. Chickens come in, hit it right there. They're gonna drink, they're gonna push these stainless steel triggers and drink from them. It's just that simple. Now what's nice is these are spring loaded. There's a little rubber gasket behind them. They push on it and the water comes out and then the spring pushes it forward when they're not hitting it and they stop leaking versus the vertical ones constantly trip. They drive me nuts. I love these. And there's just this little bill here to hold a little bit of water. Even your ducks will use this. But since you have this, and this is our first time doing a duck dipper, it's hard for me to predict. They may not use this. They may go for the easier source of water. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Also, 
If you didn't like the, what was this non? Three by three, four by four, four by four. Four by four squares. This will just lift up and pull right out. And obviously you can just pull this right out like this. And you can change it out if you want. Okay? Yeah. Super, super easy. Again, thank you because we talked about this a lot and brainstormed a lot. And, you know, you heard us, you came up with a solution. I mean, it, it means the world, really. Because today, it's like you have these contractors and everything is, well, you wanted this, you got this, and if it's not exactly right, well, too bad. And it, this experience has just not been that. It's thank been... You. I want to please you, and it's just that's unusual today. That Nan and I grew up in the so, customer service industry, yes, yeah. so we were born and bred that, and I can't thank you enough for saying that. I am not asking her to say that. No, this is what people just do yeah. not see. There's a reason why I'm 40, I look like I'm 80, but it's what we love to do. <laughs> you make it all worth it. You know, I'm so fortunate my kids are able to be here, but last four or five years, I already saw them because we're kind this is what we're doing because right. we're putting our. I mean, it's Family Business 101. We're just doing everything we can to make you guys happy. And uh, it means a lot that you guys recognize it. We are so lucky. Chicken people are our best customers. And, you know, if you're thinking about buying a custom coupe from us, there it is. Okay? Yeah, you're going to wait a little bit. There's going to be a lot of phone calls. But that's what we're here for. You want to go out and buy a cookie cutter coupe? We sell cookie cutter coupes. We build them because we want to have the best coupe for the best price. If you want custom... You want something that's one of a kind and have that experience, that's what we're here for. So I'm so happy that it made you guys happy. And it's not just us, you know, Sean and AV have been here. Those guys are just always by my side, working nonstop, making sure, yeah, if you want it, we're going to give it to you. Yeah, you know? and kudos to them too, because they clearly, their hearts are in this too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember the first day I was out doing something with the chickens and Sean came down the driveway and he's like, I have your beauty in the truck. And I mean, it, the excitement happened from the moment you got here. You. And it just, it's, it shows with all of you. Thank you. That means a lot to us. Can we get all of, all of the, the dice family in here to show just how large the run is? Um, well, in perspective, so he's 6'8". That's actually so. good, yeah, because he clears it. Yeah, and if you come in here eight foot, so inside, 88 inches. So we are just under at seven and a half foot. Well, so just under seven and a half foot. There's six people in half of the run, now five, and there's <laughs> plenty of space. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you too. And this, nobody over there is short. <laughs> this probably was the selling point in addition to everything I've said, because I'm a pretty good online shopper at all hours of the night. I and I looked and looked and looked and looked and everywhere I looked nobody had run space and I realized I guess that a lot of people free range all the time I don't think we'll do that we work we're not always here and so I want them safe mm -hmm. and I don't think most people get that because everywhere we went we're looking at runs that are like this yes. big and it had the height of maybe the hen house but the run is small and I just you know I'm asking well how many chickens can you put in there and there was like one that had a run the size of this and he's like well you may not want to do more than eight, <laughs> eight? That's that? true. Like, they're out of their mind it so this was the yeah. first time I saw like okay somebody seems to agree yeah that we're, they we're, need we're chicken space. people we're animal lovers yes that's why I guess we're in this business we we get it and I didn't des design these coops and start a coop business to make money I did it because I just love building things for animals and I'm fortunate to turn into a business and that's something that I agree. It blows me away. So if you're watching this video and you're chicken coop shopping, yes, you want a large run. And a lot of people don't think about this for two reasons. One, because you see so many coops that there's not even a roof on top of the run. It's screened. That's a nightmare. You don't want it wet in here. That's going to be a health issue. And you want it as big as possible, especially if you cannot free range. Now, you, a lot of people do end up free ranging, but even if you free range all the time, you want to run because you want this ability. Let's say you had to treat your lawn. You don't want your chickens out there. Keep them inside here. Let's say you, one of your boys are getting married. You have the wedding here. You don't want your chickens out there. Keep them inside here. You got to let your dogs out. For whatever reason, you have right. Right. options. That's a nice part. Now, um, one question about this. Yes. When they did the foundation, mm -hmm. I didn't think to ask them. I almost said, 
leave that grass in the middle part because now I have this. So mm -hmm. do I put sod? Do I, what do I do with this? Um, so you technically don't have to do anything. Now, if you left the sod or grass in here, it would end up dying. They would end up eating it. Um, and you're going to get a lot of nitrogen in here. So it could end up uh, being a little too much, especially if you did end up overloading this with chickens. But again, the run size, this is where square footage is important. You don't want to overload this. Bare minimum is 10 square feet per hen. I always say go as much as you can. Now, um, I love what you've done. You have a pressure treated base. There's stone underneath that, which is great for drainage. The entire coop is sitting on that. So it's a great foundation, great footer. Now, you have, it, it's like a sandy clay material, very common down here um, in Virginia. If you were to add anything, what I would do is just go to your local nursery and get like a, a lot of times you see like a horse manure uh, soil combination, which is really nice. Chickens want, again, they need to work. You gotta think of it like the forest floor. So especially if they cannot free range, this is their outside. So you gotta make sure they have everything out here that they would have if they're free ranging. Uh, so area to scratch without, you know, you know, for example, a lot of people put gravel inside their run. No, there's no gravel pads in the forest floor. You want the forest floor. Also, as you're throwing your table scraps in here, that's going to help make this almost into its own composted area. And the chickens will absolutely love it. Um, also, if you have to add, you know, we, with our office, we had shredded paper, uh, deciduous leaves in the fall time. Chickens absolutely love that. Uh, helps break down, add that organic material to the run. Plus, it makes them work, and there's nothing wrong if you got little buggers crawling around in here. Good, let the chickens eat it. Now, if you go to put some branches out here for them to roost on during the daytime, don't put them any higher than your roost bars inside your hen house because they do instinctively want to go to the highest point at night to sleep. So just keep that in mind. Respect Over here, we got our new style ladder. Um, two reasons for this. One, I think it looks, well, probably three. One, I think it looks a lot better than our other traditional style ramp. Uh, two, I hate scrap, um, so we're trying to burn up material, and this was just a great way to burn up a lot of these small pieces of dug fur that we had left over from the framing of the coops. And the chickens do have no problem. They absolutely love walking up these steps, or these rungs, if you will, and they'll go right into their chicken door. And something I added that is usually a request, and maybe you did request and I did it subconsciously, I don't remember. Um, we got little shepherd's hooks on the end here, and eye bolts right there. And the reason why people like this is a lot of times they'll order two of these and they want to rotate them. This is going to get dirty. This, they'll hang out here, they're going to defecate on it. This is going to be the dirtiest part, looking anyways, of your run. Um, so if you want to wash it, you can wash it, let it dry out and rotate it with a different one or just wait until um, it's dry or just wash it and bring it in here. Even if it's wet in here, it doesn't matter. But it gives you options. Yep. Super, super easy. You don't have to go unscrew it. Put it right back on here, just like that. Done. Great. Love Beautiful. that sign behind you too. I know. This is awesome. I love, again, the silver. And you can see the sawmill marks right there. <laughs> Are we ready to go get your chickens, your ducks? Sure. Ducks are going into their new home. Oh, look at this down. Really, I am.